Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. And on this video, I wanna bring you something which I think is extremely cool because inside this big box on the table, we have a Pinter 3 brewery system. This is a completely new brewery system to me. I've never tried this before. And the idea behind this, although it looks really, really cool, which I'll show you when we get this out of the box in a moment, but no, the idea is it makes the whole process a lot more simple. There's less chance of making a mistake and getting a really really good pint of beer on your first attempt. So we're going to crack into this. I'm going to take you through the whole process. You'll learn as I learn, if you like. So let's get going. Well, I've got to say 10 out of 10 for the unboxing experience. It's quite something. The box opens out fan-like, leaving your pinter in the middle there, the brewing dock at the end and the handle. So here it is. I don't, I've got no idea what colour I've got. It comes in three colours. And there we go. We've got the red one. Oh, that's pretty cool. And there you go, that is the pinter barrel there, obviously an acrylic plastic with a rubberized band around it. So that's really nice that you get this simple cover to go over the barrel. But when you look at the barrel, I mean, I think this is what sets this aside from other homebrew kits. It is the presentation. Let me just attach this rather nice metal handle onto the barrel. Because when I've made homebrew before, people come round and you say, yeah, do you want to try a beer? I've made some beer and they're, they're very kind and they say, okay, and you bring out a bottle, sometimes a, a used bottle, and you can see it in their faces. They're like, oh, okay. You can see the hesitation and it's this rather fuddy-duddy image about these old guys in a shed, okay, a bit like me, making homebrew. But uh, this is a completely different thing. This is actually quite nice and trendy and the idea being that when you brew your beer, this will stay in the fridge. And you simply bring this out, if you're having people round, put that on the side, and it's quite presentable, it looks quite cool. And then you're able to pour them a fresh glass of beer straight from the fridge. How cool is that? I do like the presentation. So there's, there's no great big instruction book inside the box, nothing to intimidate you. You do get this little hints and tips leaflet. Again, there's a 2D barcode you can scan, but no, the main instructions is just on a little 2D code there, just on the box where you get your phone, that will download an app, and that's gonna take you right the way through the whole process, the sterilization of the barrel itself, the brewing process, and then finally the conditioning of the beer. So it's all gonna be done via your phone, very, very easy, and that's gonna to appeal to a younger generation that just don't read books anymore. There we go, I've got the app on my phone. It was fairly painless as, as these things are. I've gone on and created uh, an account, called it Fred's Pinter. Once we're on this page, basically um, we can have a look now at the instructions. There are certain processes that we need to go through. There is video, little tiny video clips on the main website that you can go on and watch those. But basically we go to the instructions here. The first one is going to be purifying, sterilizing the equipment. That is so important. I've learned that myself in homebrew. If you don't get that right, it can sour the taste of the beer. And there are 12 stages here that I'm going to do in a moment. And we can see it takes you through it, shows you little illustrations on what you're gonna be doing to purify the vessel. So let's get on and do that. What I'm doing here is sterilizing all the equipment. Yeah, it is boring, but it's really essential that you do it. But whilst I'm doing that, let's talk about this Pinter 3 products because it was something I'd never heard of before. The Pinter is made by the Greater Good Fresh Brewing Company. And in 2020, it was listed in Time Magazine's Top 100 Best Inventions. I believe it was started by two guys with their passion to bring home brewing up to date, bring it into the 21st century and not just something that your granddad does. And it's really refreshing because that passion is still there today. This is the third generation of the Pinter. And I believe they produce something like five or 600 prototypes just to get it to this level. And with every new version, they're trying to make the process even more simple. When you do homebrew the traditional way, it is the complexity using multiple equipment, uh, cross-contamination, lack of sterilization that quite often produces a disappointing beer. And this is where the pinter is different because everything happens in one barrel and even after fermentation, the yeast drops down into a removable dock and that's taken away so the beer can condition on its own. 
And because of that, the beer stays in the barrel, in the fridge, and you simply pour it from the barrel to drink. There's no messy, tiresome bottling process to go through. However, that convenience, well, it does come at a slight cost because the pinter only holds 10 pints of beer or 17 cans. Whereas when you do a batch of normal home brew in a barrel, well, you're looking at possibly 30 or even 40 pints of beer. Although Pinter is pretty new to the home brewing market, there are currently around 13 different types of beer and cider on the website. I've gone for a traditional bitter. The concentrated mixes are called fresh presses and it's good that they use all UK products. For example, the hops come from Kent, the malt comes from Suffolk and the apples for the cider, well that comes from Hertfordshire, which is where I live. It's worth noting that the pinter comes in three colours. There's the red one, which we have here. Then there's a light blue. And finally, a more conservative grey. Okay, uh, enough talking. In the background, you can see I've almost finished the sterilisation of the vessel. Took about eight minutes in real time. Very simple, if not a bit boring. Just followed the app on my phone of course once the fermentation is completed and i've drunk all the beer i'm gonna to have to strip all of this down again and everything will need it to be cleaned in warm soapy water now everything is squeaky clean it's the more exciting part of adding the beer mix i chose ancestors best bitter this is a 4.1 percent abv there's yet another 2d barcode inside the pack just in case you've lost the instructions and lost your way and then finally, another small 2D barcode on the pack for the beer itself. This takes you to a set of specific instructions for the beer that you're chosen, such as how to set the carbonation dial on the back of the pine pinter, and also the brewing and conditioning times. If you're still feeling a little lost, there's a blue square on the side of the screen where you can get more help. And if you download the Pinter app, then they will email you at the appropriate times, such as ending the brewery cycle and time for conditioning. After sterilizing, there's no need to rinse the vessel. And now we simply fill up the Pinter with cold tap water. I do live in a very hard water area. I suppose if you want to be posh at this stage, you could use bottled spring water. Inside the Pinter itself, part of the tank is white and then the top part is black. And you simply fill up to that dividing line. Now we can pour in the beer mix. Now just a little tip from Fred here, this stuff is normally very sticky, it's rather like treacle, so I'd recommend you put on a pair of latex gloves and get clothing well out of the way. You can then carefully pour the concentrate in. It's worth noting that with a pinter kit, there's no additional sugar that you normally have to put in when you brew. But what I would say is make sure you get every last little bit of that beer goodness out of the pack. Now it's time to add the brewer's yeast. Simply cut the packet and pour in. We can now screw on the lid of the pint. So now you need to make sure this is on really, really firm. Once you're happy with it, just fold the handle out of the way. It's now time to make sure that that beer concentrate and the yeast is thoroughly mixed. Someone else on another video called this the to shake but basically we grab hold of the barrel and we vigorously shake it now the instructions say for a minimum of 30 seconds personally I would try and go for double that one thing to note the barrel is a little heavy at this stage so if you have any mobility issues perhaps it'd be an idea to get someone to give you a hand the last thing to do is to add the brewery dock to the top of the barrel. To do this, we simply push down on the brewery dock and then rotate it clockwise until we hear a satisfying click. With the dock attached, the very last thing we need to do now is flip the barrel over and you'll hear all of the beer flow into the brew dock. And that's it. We're all done. All we need to do now is find a place at room temperature where we can leave the barrel to ferment. In my case, it's going to be six days. And after that, we're ready to condition the beer in the fridge. Hello, welcome back. Oh, no, you didn't go anywhere, did you really? Right, the pinter has now fully brewed. 
I was following it on the Pinter app and I did get a text message late last night to tell me that I was now ready for conditioning. You do get a little video on the instructions, what to do. Basically, we're gonna take off the brewing dock. I'm expecting a little bit of mess. This is what the video is, uh, is showing me. And then it's time for conditioning. Um, you can do something called cold crashing and that would involve leaving the brewing dock on the pinter, putting the whole thing in the fridge overnight and chilling the beer before you take it off. Um, personally, it just takes up too much fridge space. You've got to put it upright in a fridge and that would use up all of the fridge. I'm going to struggle to get it in the fridge as it is. But anyway, let's, um, let's take off this brewing dock and uh, let's see what uh, mess we get at the bottom of the sink. So it should simply unscrew. There's going to be a little bit of pressure, hopefully, in the barrel. But let's see what happens. Obviously, I've got to clean all this up. Well, there we go. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Lifting off the uh, off the pine to there. Smells nice. And that is all the. All the yeasty beer. Well, that's not too bad. I was expecting a little bit more. So what I've got to do now is clean everything up. There is a bit of cleaning involved. It's nothing like doing barrels though. And also I'm going to say that whilst this was brewing, um, I didn't get any sort of yeasty brewery smell from it, which I don't mind. But the missus always complains when I do this in a barrel or a bucket. Um, I had no, no smells from it at all, at all. No gassy sounds or anything. So let me just clean everything up. Uh, and then we can put the cap back on and the handle and then I've got to go and put this in the fridge. So that's the cleaning done. Um, compared to normal brewing in a barrel or a bucket, there's very little mess. It's quite, it's quite refreshing actually. That's normally the bit I don't like is all of the sterilisation of the bottles and all the cleaning. And this is, yeah, this is pretty mess free. Right, let's get the end, uh, the end plate. Pop that back in. And now I can simply attach the handle. And there we go, that's the, that's my point to done. So I say what I've got to do now is find some fridge space and then put the beer into the fridge for a few days. It depends on which pack you use, what kit you use. Again, I'm just going to follow the app on my phone and it will uh, send me a little pop-up notification when it's ready to drink. And then uh, we can do the pouring and I'll let you know what I think of the beer. The reviews have been very good. Um, the flavour on the beer is supposed to be very, very nice. And I can't wait to get my first point. So join me for the pouring. So here we go then. I had a message pop up on my phone last night telling me the conditioning is now finished and we're ready to pour. I did look at the costs of this compared to traditional homebrew kits and the setup cost by the time that you buy your barrels and your siphoning and if you have to buy beer bottles of course that adds to the cost. The cost from a traditional home homebrew barrel or bucket kit compared to get buying this it's about the same it works out pretty much about the same all in of course I suppose the downside of this is the fact that you only get 10 pints in the barrel and with a traditional kit when I've done those before you, you get between 30 to sometimes 40 pints if you go for the big one so price per pint of course this is going to be more expensive the flip side of that is that this is easier to brew. It's so much easier to brew. There's less mess, although I will have to clean this barrel out and this uh, tap comes out and I will have to clean all that. But it's a lot less mess. Different. But anyway, enough talking. So we're gonna pour this. Uh, this is their new tap system. Apparently this is new to the pint of three. And um, obviously this is under pressure in the barrel now because it's um, fermented and the uh, carbon dark side has been left in the barrel. So I think it's regulated on how hard you pour this will depend on the size of the head that you get with the beer. But first, I've got to clear through the filter and the tap. So unfortunately, the first half a pint is waste. And that's normal anyway for homebrew. So let's just zoom out a little bit. And uh, right, let's, uh, let's, let's get that first half a pint out of the way. Right, 
Wow, well that's lively, isn't it? I mean, just on that first pour. So unfortunately, we got to bin that. <laughs> it seems a shame, doesn't it? And then I can pour a proper pint. But already, I'd say that's um, certainly lively. Right, so here we go. Um, as far as the beer goes, I've got a feeling this might be just very slightly cloudy. You do get that with homebrew. Normally, if you're in a barrel, I have to generally leave it a good week for it to completely settle. I'm not that worried, really. I, I'm more into the flavour, into the taste. Right, here we go. So we're only going to pull this handle back a little way. I don't want quite so much head. And obviously tilting the glass here, 45 degrees, slowing it down a little bit. Got quite a nice big head coming in. I do like this handle, it's very smooth on the delivery. Slowing it down a bit now, because I've got a nice bit of head. Very, uh, very smooth handle. Go. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of a drip. Make sure you push that back. And there's the beer. And uh, hopefully you can see. I know it's a little bit dark in here, but we've got some uh, carbonation going on there, going up the side of the glass. That's good to see. I don't like beer too fizzy, but I don't obviously don't you don't want it flat. As far as um, opaqueness goes, that's almost clear. I can't really. Don't know how that's coming out. That's not bad. I have a feeling that will become clearer as time goes on. Quick smell test. Mmm. Smells nice. Right, off camera, because I don't go in front of the camera, but uh, let me give you an honest taste test. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. Got a very nice full flavour. Um, let me say a bit more. Mm. That is a that is a good beer for homebrew. It's um, it's very lively on the tongue. It's almost like it's carbonated. Um, it sort of almost fizzes on the tongue. Uh, it's got a nice hoppy flavour. I'm now starting to get that sort of after bitter taste that you'd expect, obviously, with bitter. Um, taste wise. It's a cross between, I would say, Newcastle Brown Owl and John Smith's. I'm <laughs> getting gas, sorry. Shows you it's, it's quite gassy. Let me have another slurp. Mm. Yeah, definitely I'm getting that bitter sort of aftertaste now, hoppy taste. It's good. That is bloody good, guys. Yeah, John Smith's. Very nice, very smooth. I've got to say, and I've done a lot of homebrew since lockdown, that is a very nice beer. The reviews said that the taste of the beer is nice, and I couldn't, I couldn't distinguish from that, between that and, say, canned beer. Definitely um, like John Smith's. I'm enjoying that. Mm. Oh, that is nice. Just about the right temperature as well. So there you go, Ancestors Bitter. Yeah, that is a really, really nice flavour. And I'll be honest with you, so simple to do, having done all the other kits. And 10 pints, well, it's enough for me. I'm not really a heavy drinker. So there you go. I don't think there's much else I, I can show you really. I, I'll do the washing up when I finish the barrel, and that won't be for a couple of weeks. But so yeah, pint of three. I think if you've never done homebrew before and you're a little bit worried about cocking it up because you can cock it up, this is almost foolproof. I really can't see how you can uh, mess this up. And the product, the finished product, that is a really nice beer. And that's really what you want. Certainly I'd be happy with serving that to people that come round to dinner, but I'd have no problem about pouring a pint. I think it'd be quite a cool thing to do. So there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed the review. Pine Turf sent me a discount code that I will put into the uh, description below. If you use that, and if you say it's from Fred, you should hopefully get a discount when you uh, check out on the website. And that's uh, well, that's really all I can say. Thank you for uh, tuning into the video.
Your views are always appreciated. There's the thumbs up from Fred in the shed. If you've got a minute, just hit me a thumbs up down below before you go. I really would appreciate it. But for now, as always, please, please, please stay safe, drink sensibly, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.